been an amazing trip. Uh, thank you, uh, um, Long Beach Waterfront Warriors, for uh, inviting us up here to take part. It's been, it's just been a phenomenal trip. Like all the things we've gotten to do, going to Ground Zero and uh, Rescue One, like the goosebumps you get just from being in places like that, and then. Uh, the food here has been amazing. All the volunteers have just been great. Everything that we've done here. Just being around all these people have, has like made my heart so full. And like knowing everyone's stories and talking to everyone is just like fantastic. And it's a great experience. Perfect. Great job. So I didn't know what I was walking into coming here this week. And yeah. Individual stories I've heard from people, the events we've gone to have been things that all take with me and take home and have forever. And it's truly like life changing in a weird way. I didn't expect this at all. I have had an amazing experience. This is the most generous.
you listen up a moment, please? Uh, among the many volunteers and people who have helped out or met all the volunteers, we're going to get back to a list in a little while. But first, uh, what happened with the fishing trip, Pete Myers runs it. There are people, generous people, who, who set up all the fishing trips and take the people out. So we want to invite Kevin up to speak on behalf of the Point Lookout Fishing Captain. Thank you. Thank you. I, I might want to move closer to the speakers because my high-pitched, squeaky, annoying voice might be even worse than the squeakiness. So, anyway, bear with me. Um, on behalf of the captains, there were about eight or nine of us. Another fantastic year. And, um, thank you. We, on behalf of all of us, want to thank you for everything you've done. I don't know how to elaborate that, but we understand and it's just really tremendous. And I also want to thank you um, for honoring us, for coming to be with us, because it really is the highlight of our entire summer. We live in a beautiful place. We do. We live in a beautiful place. We're very fortunate to be here. But number one, we couldn't be here if it weren't for all of your sacrifices. So that's number one. Number two, as beautiful as it is, it gets so much more beautiful for one week a year, and that's thanks to you also. So again, on behalf of the captains, thanks very much. It was a great year, and we look forward to seeing you again next year. Actually, Pete, you, you hit the nail in the head about what's in front of us. You know, I'm not, I'm not much into uh, a farewell dinner, and that's what this is, it's a farewell dinner, and uh, I'm actually, I'm sad, I'm sad to see you guys go, uh, um, it means so much that you're here, to us, you know, to our, in our lives, throughout our lives, we, we meet people, and we meet people that touch our lives, and hopefully we touch their lives. And I, I can't tell you, like Pete said, what you mean to us, not only as our country, the sacrifices that you and your wives, your family have made for us. Like I spoke in uh, Rescue One, you protect a, a, a way of life. And as an immigrant that wasn't born here, I really, really treasure that. So I can't say enough about you and your sacrifices. And on behalf of the FDNY, the fire department, we're honored, we wanted to be here. And I, I think, you know, life goes full circle. And, and it's gone full circle for me. It really has. You know? To find out that there's two 9-11 babies that were born on 9-11. There was two babies that were born on Veterans Day. We have a, a widow and a daughter that lost their father on 9-11. It's full circle. And, and what I mentioned in Rescue One about being a brotherhood, I really meant that. I don't, you know, I like to take my heart out and put it on the sleeve, and I, and I mean that. We're all a brotherhood and a sisterhood. The city of Long Beach, Point Lookout, you become part of our family. You really have. I mean, there's a couple of you now that I know, and then when I see the kids, and like I mentioned the other day, I mean, it's beautiful. Some of them, they met friends, and now I met some new friends. And there's some warriors that I haven't had the honor to have met and to just to say a few words. But know this, know that you touched me. You touched me, and I'm, I'm, I'm a better person for what you stand for. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I thank Jerry and the volunteers here that did everything. It, it, to me, this is, this is really 
what Jerry has created here is just, it, it's an honor for me to be able to volunteer. I've learned that, I've learned that over the years. It, it's, it's an honor for me to be in your presence and to say thank you and to hold your babies. Thank you so much. And I really can't wait to see you next year. And thank you for making my summer. God bless you. Okay, I'm going to start with the thank yous. I'm going to miss a million people. No apologies. But I want to thank my wife, Colleen, in the back. Yeah. So my brother's here. I think my sister's still here. But the day was working the beach. Marty was taking up space for a week. And uh, yesterday my nieces came down. So it's a pleasure for me to be a part of something that my family's a part of and people that I care about who I've just met and people that I know from the community, people that I really care about, to come down and, uh, like Al said, if I tried in the past to name the volunteers and pass on that information, somebody asked me, give me a list of people who helped out, and some of them I don't know. There are so many people who contribute money, time, energy, and love to make this happen that it, it overwhelms me, as I was saying. There's a few people I do want to mention, Jane Blackburn and his whole crew, who said work all day. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, uh, when I was on the beach getting some sun, they were working all day. And that has happened every day since we've been there. But after the beach, there's somebody there at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., somebody's cleaning up. Oh, it's just great to be a part of something like this where so many people contribute. So, um, this is a joke, but I'm not joking. There's a list here, three pages, of people who we have to thank, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'll be reading all the fire departments, and all the sheriffs, and all the police departments, and the Jersey State Troopers, and it goes on and on. The people that contribute. Uh, the other day when we were at Rescue One, the Chief of Operations came down, said, you know, I know you're getting the fire department tents out in Long Beach, but that's a good thing. So we just got, besides all the other support, the firemen that help out, Kevin, all the uh, police agencies that help out, it's just I can't name all of them. I do have a request though. I was trying to go around individually, so thank God we don't go to Walter Reed every three weeks like we used to when there was constant injuries. But we're, we're, we're looking for families who would benefit from this week that you've experienced. So, uh, two things. One is Tracy McAdams and Kevin McAdams, some of you I met last year. They have a trip in November. If it's, if it's okay with you, I'm going to send your information, emails to them, and they're recruiting for their November trip. And I'm asking you, if you have families who you think would benefit, the criteria is that you think they would benefit. Your word is good with us. I'm, I'm kind of emotional. This week is always the highlight of my summer. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of you know that I've had a three couple of rough years with my family. And when you people come and see me and get on my table and I get to give you a massage, and you give me so much that I, I don't really think you understand how great it is to have you here. And the other issue is this community that we live in, what I see people do, and all my luggers that bring all my stuff down, it, it, it just, it gives me the, the push I need to deal with what I'm going through. And I love you all, and I appreciate you all being here, and I hope you all come back again. And I'm doing my southern tour soon, and I'm gonna be popping in on all of you. <laughs> so really, I, I really appreciate for those of you I didn't get to massage, I apologize. <laughs> Levi, where are you? <laughs> it's your fault though. <laughs> you had to go in the ocean, didn't you? <laughs> and if I did hurt you in any way, <laughs> I apologize for that too. But wow. really, thank you so much for this week and for all you do and all you give us. That's it. I just want to tell you a little story because 
Uh, people often ask me why I got involved um, with the Long Beach Waterfront Warriors, and I'm going to get a little emotional, but when my father passed away and I was at his wake, there were Vietnam veterans who came to the wake, and I thought they were in the wrong wake, to be perfectly honest with you. And I was like, I don't, I think you're in the wrong wake. And they said, no, your dad would come once a week and he would cook and feed us. And when there was an opportunity here in Long Beach, 14, 15 years ago, the number doesn't matter anymore, to be a part of this organization and to start to give back, it was an honor to me for, to live on his legacy as a veteran in the Navy to give back. And most of you know that the worst thing about war is to be forgotten. And I just want you to know, and the Long Beach community wants you to know, you're not forgotten, and you never will be. So your family, your friends, and we'll see you again next year. I don't get any introduction from North Carolina. <laughs> Something about the Yankees against the South, I don't know. <laughs> First of all, thank you to Jerry and our Long Beach Waterfront Warriors. And we give them a hand clap again. Um, so, being a person that lives in North Carolina, in the home of Camp Lejeune, Camp Lejeune, however you choose to say that, whichever one you want to say, right? Um, I cannot say that I have experienced as much patriotic experience as I have here in Long Beach, which is actually like completely the opposite of what we're supposed to do in the South, right? <laughs> um, or what you would think that would happen in a military town or a place that's military based, right? So just thank you to Long Beach as well here in New York, not California, as that's what the hashtag says. Long Beach, New York, hashtag not California. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you all here in Long Beach, New York. But as a military spouse that has been a Lynx mentor, um, I, I've survived deployments alone, I've survived chronic illness alone, and all kinds of things alone, right? And so we have all these classes and um, key spouse options to survive while our spouses are in the, in the Marine Corps, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the whoever, right? But we have nothing to train us or to give us comfort when they're out. But thank God for Long Beach Waterfront Warriors and thank God for Waterfront Warrior South, right? Because those are the places that we can go and those are the places that we have to find respite and those are the places that we have to find comfort when we don't have that comfort after that military service. Um, so thank you for that, Jerry. As, you, as I told you day one, I didn't want to come to Long Beach. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jerry's like, hey, how you doing? Like, good to see you again. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't want to come. <laughs> like, it's another one of those trips for him. Like, dude, I didn't want to come. And he's like, yeah, so it's not going to be that? And I was like, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so, um, at, at the end of the day, today, I can say that Jerry was right. <laughs> and if you ask my husband, I never say a man is wrong. So... <laughs> Just ask my husband. I never say a man is right. Yeah, all right. He had a point, but he wasn't right. But Jeremy's right. <laughs> it's on tape. <laughs> it's on tape. And I'm on camera. So um, just to you spouses, male or female spouses, this is our place to be. I know nobody taught us how to be here after retirement, after injuries, or after whatever. But this is our moment in time. And from a Lynx instructor that taught you how to survive in that deployment, after deployment, after deployment, I apologize. But this is, our, this is our moment. And this is our time. And we will live. And we will survive. And thank you again. And God bless you all. Keep living. I just want to straighten something out. The person who started the Long Beach Waterfront Works before I was involved at all with John McLaughlin. Yeah. The only thing that I contributed is I said I would not participate unless the families came up. So that is our benefit. When somebody turns to me and asks me that question, it's about the family. And we know how much the soldier, Marine, husband or wife 
participate in the service, but we know that at home those people are affected just as much. So that's why we always insist on bringing the families up. But John McLaughlin started this, not I, okay? Hopefully y'all will indulge me for just a second. So I'm standing on the boardwalk and I'm watching people come across the finish line. And I see Jamie. And Jamie comes up to me and she gives me a hug. And she says, welcome home. And those words have been resonating with me all week. I forgot my medication because I'm doing pretty bad. And my wife went home. She drove all the way back to Virginia, pulled an all-nighter, came back with my medication. But as the sun was rising over New York City, my daughter looked at the city and said, I'm home. And the reason why we feel this way is because of you and you and all the volunteers and everybody that has made this place home. That's what Waterfront Warriors is about. It's not about the free stuff. It's not about the food. It's not about the beach. It's about being home. You've turned Long Beach into a second home. You've turned Long Beach into a place where we can come for a week and we can feel at ease where we can feel like our troubles have melted away and where we feel like nothing else matters but that we're one big happy family. That's why I love y'all so much. I'm blessed. I'm blessed that I came last summer for the first time. I'm blessed that my family has made incredible friends. And I'm blessed that y'all brought us back. That's what makes this organization so special. There are other organizations out there that take care of veterans, that take care of wounded warriors, but they have nothing on this one. And it's simply because of the love, the respect, the compassion, and the true desire to want to make veterans feel loved. And all I can say is thank you welcoming us home. You got this. I still have some of the letters that he would send us. And sorry, I remember um, sometimes when I would talk to my friends about my dad being in the military, it was kind of just like a sketchy subject and no one really knew what to respond to it with. They're just like, oh, that's neat. And like, no one really related or understood. You're good, Lily. Keep going, baby. Sorry. So. Coming here and meeting people who do understand and like people my age and not just adults is really great. I've made a lot of friends here and over, like in the last Waterfront Warriors thing I went to and it's like her. <laughs> She's <laughs> She's a, like someone I met here, and she understands not like your dad not being around for a little while, and that's just priceless to me because I've just been a subject that really you don't talk about much in my circle. So I just I want to thank you guys for doing all of this because having the opportunity to make these amazing friends is just so wonderful. I don't know about everyone else, but <laughs> obviously I'm in tears talking about it. So it's great. And I feel like I've talked too much. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm not usually one to come
come up here and speak because of my anxiety. So I am going to sound like I'm about to cry and shaky, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, my dad is Vincent Cercioni, as most of you guys know, and this has been our second time for this summer, um, third time all around. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for what they have done for us. It's always a hard year for us because we like to do a lot of things. I've danced almost 24-7. Um, so does my little sister. And so there's not a lot of free time that me and my family get to have. And when we get to come here, it's the one week where we actually get to spend time as a family. And so I want to just say thank you to everybody for letting us get that one week, even if it's just one. So thank you. Hey guys, uh, I'm Jamie. I know a lot of your faces, but like Al said, to the families that we didn't get to sit with tonight, um, my father was firefighter Kevin O'Rourke, and um, he was my hero long before he was taken from us on the day where so much was taken from not just our families, but from our country. Uh, it took me a really long time to be able to do this talking, and I'm so proud of the young ladies and men that spoke tonight. It takes a lot to put our emotions out. And if there's one thing I've learned in the seven years of joining the Waterfront Warriors and being adopted as a family into that group, it's that even at our worst points, um, we have so much support. I'm not ashamed to say I've had rough years. There's years I've sent cookies because it's the only way I could tell you guys I love you. This town loves you. They are the best cookies. <laughs> <laughs> it's big with love. And it's your faces. It's our jokes. It's our sass. It's our commitment to realizing that in our darkest days, we get through things together. I am a stronger human because of you guys, because of the volunteers. Like, we get through things together. That's been Long Beach's motto. It's been my motto since day one. I had a million uncles in the FD after my dad died. And I sound like a broken record, and I know a lot of you have heard me say it, but to the new families who trusted us enough to come up this year to put your families in our hands, even in the ocean. <laughs> I just want you to know that trust is both ways, and I feel capable to be myself and to say that we grow together, our families grow bigger, our hurt is felt and understood in ways that aren't always understood out there, and you guys make me stronger and I'm capable to overcome it because of you and because of what you do. Even when we're crying, we're laughing. Even when we're laughing, we're crying. And I'll be lucky to do this as long as you guys keep coming up. I'll have butter. <laughs> we'll bake. But thank you guys so much. The volunteers helped me just as much as they help you. But I've done things I've never wanted to do in my life because a kid or a soldier or a wife it's like, no, come on, let's go. Get out of your comfort zone. Let's do this. We could do it together. And we really are stronger together. And I hope we get to keep doing this. A lot. Um, my name's Araceli. And um, this is the second time that we've came. And it's just been so amazing um, seeing my dad have so much fun and my little brother. And it was just the little things, you know, my dad can't, he can't go on the beach because his wheelchair and having those mats that he can go on the beach and go in the water. <laughs> just really great. I want to say thank you to everybody. And like she said, um, people don't really understand and it's hard. You don't have anybody to talk to. You just, just gotta deal with it by yourself. But having other people here that understand 
It's really great. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. probably heard me from whenever we did the married into my mom. She was a single mom for a really long time. And um, she, um, you know, we were all just so blessed. And so um, I remember just, um, I remember it was like when they were dating and Dan had to go on a, a, a deployment to guitar. And I remember being like, oh, he won't stay. Like, you know, and uh, he ended up staying. He, we ended up moving to Florida. He didn't even know what he was getting into. Like, you know, we, I got blessed with two little siblings. And it just shows me how much of, like, the military turns people into such a strong character and how, like, good people everyone is. Um, but you guys, are the reason why we all like get together and like everyone was saying like we are like a family and this is my first year here but I feel like I it's like the grandparents I was never able to have um I hate to be like a Debbie Downer but um on the airport here um, I actually found out about my Nana passing away and um it was really hard but just like Jerry giving me a hug. It made me realize that she's in a way better place now. And I just love all you guys, and even though I haven't talked to most of you, but you guys are all like amazing people. And I'm so, I just feel so blessed to be with all of you. And like I said, Jerry is such eating cake. <laughs> It's just such an amazing guy. I walked into the airport with uh, secret security, mind you, um, and and just gave me the biggest hug. And he's never met me, and I just felt like so at home. And I, um, I just want to say I love you guys. I love the volunteers. You guys are all like amazing people, and all of you adults are the reason why these kids are gonna grow up and be good people like you guys are. Like, you guys all inspire me to become a greater and better person so I can help other people in the world. I just want to say thank you to everyone in the teens that I haven't really met yet, but you guys are all awesome. But I just want to say I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. And mwah. <laughs> thank you. Brandon came in second in musical chairs. <laughs> you know who won, right? <laughs> Coming here makes me feel safe and happy, and I have a lot of fun. I make new friends and see old friends, and I have so much fun. Yeah. I'm not going to use that, just I don't like it. <laughs> um, I mean, because uh, I'm glad I'm going to follow that young man and uh, on his last couple of words that he said uh, about coming out here and feeling safe, feeling safe and feeling guarded, all right? That means a lot to me. And uh, unfortunately, you know, things happen, right? And we got to just uh, truck on and... Um, show our families uh, as a uh, head of household, we gotta show them that we gotta tackle every single adversity out there. And unfortunately in our situation, sometimes we can't. So coming out here, making sure 
that somebody's out there watching out for my kids, watching out that um, they're gonna go out there, they're gonna be safe. They're gonna there's a there's a lifeguard, there's a fire fighter out right there. There's just a volunteer in the community ready to jump jump into action. If anyone here needs to, that means a lot to me. You know, there there's certain things that I, I understand that I can't do anymore. But this week out here, I was able to let my guard down on telling my kids, no, you can't go out there, you can't swim, because I can no longer go out there and do that and be be there, be there to, just in case something were to happen. So that that that's huge, you know, that just word words can't explain from a situation here how much that means to us. <coughs> Such a great organization that you guys got going on here, Jerry and uh, the rest of all you, the volunteers. Um, just uh, thank you isn't enough, but um, what you do for us, what you do for us, just, just is tremendous. And I know that earlier somebody brought uh, brought up Vietnam. You know, I, I make it a point to tell my kids that um, you got to thank every Vietnam veteran you see. You know, they, they wear that cap now, you know, with pride, and they can wear that cap with pride now. And it, should, it shouldn't just be now, it should have been the day that they came back home, and they didn't have that. But we do, we do, because of communities like Long Beach, New York, <laughs> not California, you know, we, we have that. We have that, and I uh, and I attribute a lot of that to the individuals that said that no other generation of warriors will ever have to endure what they had to endure. And it's, that in itself, that that in itself is just beyond words. So thank you, thank you, Long Beach, thank you, Jerry, thank you to all your volunteers um, from the bottom of my heart. All right, good night everyone. I usually don't talk to Polix, I hate it. But today I cannot live without saying thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to Jerry, volunteers, families. And thank you so much for bringing us to this hotel. Nice. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, I can tell you this much. I'm probably going to mess up a lot, which she did too. <laughs> which is okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh God. <laughs> I can tell you this much. I have never <laughs> had this much fun in the summer. Um, like ever. So, um, thank you to everyone. Somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry, and you <laughs> too as well. Okay. <laughs> Breathing is hard right now. Okay. <laughs> Breathing is hard. <laughs> I know I have lungs for that, but still it's hard. <laughs> so, um, I can tell you, well, having people who understand what it's like, it's amazing. <laughs> Especially because having someone who's like, you're not really sure if you can talk to them about everything. It's just amazing <coughs> to have people to talk to who know what you're going through and know what it's like. <laughs> so, um, again, thank you to everyone who came out here. <laughs> I don't do a lot of public speaking, even though I was into communications. <laughs> just, just, just how it works. Uh, I've been invited to all kinds of stuff, but I always turn them down. 
And the one reason, the main reason why I always turn them down is they didn't involve the family. There's always the vet or the spouse. And I was like, if my kids can't go, I'm not going. And when I got the first invite to the one in Naples, I was like, all right, cool. So we went, and then I met the Cookie Monster, Jerry. <laughs> and then he and my son hit it off. I'm like, all right, we'll see. And he was like, well, I'm gonna invite you to Long Beach. And you know, you come up there and, have, and see what it's like. And so far, I've had nothing but a great time from start to finish. Even though it's not finished yet, but it was a pleasure to come here and see because when 9-11 happened, I was on a rifle range one year in the Marine Corps. They didn't have no clue what that was like. But that set the stage right then and there how the next 19 years after that for me was going to be like. And honestly, I have no regrets with the sacrifices. Yes, I lost a lot of friends along the way, but we all know what it was for. It was for the American people. <clears throat> Not for us, we just, hey, we're doing a job. We do good at it. We survive. Which our only thing we want to do is to get home. And it was a pleasure knowing after service and there's an organization like this that welcome us. And it's not why we're still active. It's, hey, you a vet? Hey, come on in. And during the whole time, the one, brand, the one group of warriors I always thank the most was the Vietnam, because they was a forgotten. And I'm like, when are they gonna start getting recognized? And it was, when they finally start recognizing them, I mean, that opens a lot of doors for a lot of people. Because when we saw them, they always thanking us, like, for what we do. I'm like, no. Y'all paved the way half the World War. And we just try to, we're trying to live up to your expectations. We wouldn't know how to run through the Frozen Chosen. We wasn't that strong yet. Would have got there, would have got it done. But they went through the most terror, from what I've seen, due to my experience. But just for y'all having us here and just the appreciation and seeing Ground Zero. It's the first time I've seen Ground Zero since it happened. I've died, I've avoided New York just because of that. That just, just, just how it was. And just, just to see it, I'm like, you know what? That kind of brings some closure to my chapter of all the all what I was fighting for. I see it on TV, but I never saw it in person. So I have zero regrets of what I've done. Um, I appreciate my family for sticking it out with me. And I hope, hope they all had fun here and enjoy themselves. And we'll be back next year. Loud and deep. Here, you can't hear me? Uh -uh. Lord, I can hear me. You look great, yeah. Thank you, Bella. <laughs> She's my southern sister right there. I like that one. Okay, my name <laughs> My name's Cynthia. Um, I've probably I've known a couple bunch of you and I've seen y'all's faces. I've tried to talk to at least everybody I can. Um, I'm the one that's got the two 9-11 babies. <laughs> um, my husband's a double MPT. I'm also a Marine. Um, and we met there. He was the first double MPT I'd ever seen in my whole entire career, which wasn't very long. It's my first duty station. Um, but ever since then, three months later, we met, fell in love, and 11 has been our number. Um, November 11, 2011 is when we dated. We got married in 11. We, everything we've done has always been 11. Our first department, everything. Coming here, meeting Jerry at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Man, man, oh man, this is before babies. Jerry just comes up, like he always does. Y'all know his personality, he's very friendly, very bubbly. Comes up, gives hugs, tells you he loves you. He's like your best friend. Comes in, he's like, hey, Corporal Mace. Well, Lance Corporal, I'm gonna need your help. I got a bunch of Marines. I need to get the, I need to get some wounded warriors up here. My program's really good. 
I was like, I got you. So I started helping them out with some liaison work. I got some people up there. And then when we finally got up here, I wasn't even here as a spouse. I was here helping like with the Marines because it was all like part of the like uh, program with the Marine Corps. So I helped out with the Marine Corps. And then I came up here the next year as a, as a spouse. I can't tell you the amount of love, camaraderie. I met Jamie O'Rourke the first time I ever had my baby. She held her, loved her up. Jerry was getting honored, um, and he thought I didn't even have the baby. He didn't even know what happened until I surprised him with our food, walked right in, and said, this is your goddaughter right here, 9-11. <laughs> We've been a part of this family for a good minute, and I mean, every year, it's always a blessing to come up here, meet the same people that we fall in love with, became our family, all the volunteers, getting to watch our children grow up, the, the friends our children get to make. I'm pretty sure I can, I mean, everybody that's came up here before me has said it enough, you know, thank you. It's just not something that we can't say enough. Thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts for allowing us to be a part of your family, for, of your community. I mean, I live an hour away, but men are going like Long Beach. I'm trying to convince my husband to move down here. He ain't he happening. I don't know what's wrong with him. You know? Yeah, get him up. Yeah. We only got like one neighbor we like. <laughs> you know? Right? They ain't like me down there. They don't even know me. <laughs> they probably don't want to know me. Though, but yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, from the bottom of our hearts, it's just truly a blessing to be here, you know, every year. And like this year, I didn't even know who was coming. I asked Jerry, I said, hey, Jerry. I texted him. I was like, listen, Kevin mentioned to Lewis if we were coming. I don't want to impose, so are we coming or not? <laughs> He's like, please come, please. I don't know what y'all do. We're thinking y'all don't know y'all come up here. What y'all do? Thank you. Catherine, you want to say something? Catherine, you want to come up here and say something? No? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, normally she got shot all of a sudden. I know she's with her best friend. Isabel's been her best friend. All right, well, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Most participants caught a lot of fish. In fact, today on the beach, if you had any of the fish prepared by Tom Madsen from the VFW, you might have eaten the very fish you caught. He cooked that fish uh, uh, today. <coughs> a few of our guests just didn't have the sea legs to do any fishing, but we'll keep that a secret. <laughs> <laughs> the next. The Appenbright family got seasick and they couldn't fish. That's what I'm talking about, sea legs. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> All right, on honorable mention, Captain George Urich and Jim O'Brien, the fishing vessel McLovin, caught lots of fish, however, none big enough to mention. Well, although they went past tournaments, not this year. On the Baba Booey, piloted by Captain Alan Butcher, TJ landed a 16 inch bass. On the Super Hawk, under the direction of Captain Steve Kearney, uh, Ronaldo landed a 19-inch sea bass. There you are. Uh, on the Gibney Lady, piloted by Captain Kevin Halpin, Levi landed a 17-inch, two-pound, five-ounce sea robin, and Mackenzie landed a 17-inch, one-pound, nine-ounce sea robin. On the Baba Booby, once again, Adam, he landed an 18 and 3 quarter sea bass weighing in at 2 pounds. Right, you guys got to follow this now. On the peg of my heart, piloted by Captain Phil Steiner, John landed a 19 and a quarter inch fluke. Let, wait a minute, you got to follow this. Later in the afternoon, when I received an update the, that the fluke was actually 19 and 3 quarter inches. It was verified by Ted's fishing station and the mate from another boat, the Baba Bowie. I asked myself, how can a fish grow a half inch in a bucket? <laughs> I asked the mate of Baba Bowie if this is possible. You know what he said? I don't know what you're talking about. So he's out. The controversy continues. Every boat wants to be in the winner's circle. I need a winner's circle. There's the winner's circle. Hey, where are we here? <laughs> My fish 
first wife's whore. My first taste better. My first is all white meat. It has to be the winner. Perhaps the rules are not explained clearly, and that's on me. The rule was the longest edible fish. Let's get on with this fishing report. On the Christina, piloted by Captain Mike Capanna, Ryan landed a 19, 19 and a half inch fluke. Oh yeah. And then Ryan, then Ryan missed the shuttle back to the fob. We had to send a recon team to retrieve him. You should ask him about that, Al. The Long Beach Water from Ryan will not leave no man behind. The recon was a success. Are you here, Major? We made it. That said, everyone had a great time. At this point, I'm going to invoke, invoke Robert's Rules of Order. There will be no objections. Entertain the winner of this year's pool fish, a squalor day, also known as a dog shark, which far surpasses all fish by the length of this year, is Connor, the port of the board, the Kimberly Lady. Connor, step into the winner's circle right there. Captain. Thank you.